Um, a very warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and my brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is Hope, and my YouTube channel is uh, Burning Bush. On this channel, we prepare the bride of Christ. We talk about how to be, you know, how to be the bride, the Lord Jesus Christ. I told us to be according to, I think, Matthew 25, chapter 25. The, the ten virgins, the five, we are foolish, and the other five, we are wise. But uh, we'll talk about also the love, according to the scripture the Lord gave me concerning this mission. It's uh, Mark, the Gospel of Mark chapter 12, verse 30, how to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. This is what we we'll talk about on this channel. But today, I'm going to be focusing on, um, on uh, the, 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 the spirit of the age, the spirit of this age we are experiencing. You know, like uh, I, I did a video on my German, on my German channel I, uh, about an encounter I had five months ago. And again, this encounter repeated again about a week ago on the street. People, some other religion came, you know, with, we had a, um, is it a discussion. It came out, there's so much deception out there. And the Lord, thank God, the Lord prepared me concerning the, these two uh, occasions. I had encounter with these two people from two different religions. And this is what I'm about to, to talk about today. The Lord is on the, in the heart of the, the Lord Jesus Christ, that people need to be prepared. People need to know to be grounded in the word of God, in the, in the faith, not just the faith, the Lord Jesus Christ, the author of, uh, of our faith, the author of the true faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what I'm going to talk about today. And before I start, I like singing to the Lord, be blessed and be blessed and be blessed in Jesus name. Amen. I enter to holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only, Lord. I enter to honor I am. I enter to worship you only, Lord. I enter to honor I am, O oh Lord, I worship you, O oh Lord, I worship you, for your name is holy, your name is holy, Lord, for your name is righteous, for your name is glorious. Lord, let the weight of your glory fall on us. Let the weight of your glory fall. Amen. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he shares on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who we trust and obey, trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in the Lord Jesus, but to trust and obey. Oh, draw me, Lord, Lord Jesus, draw me, Lord, and I run. And we run after you. The way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. And I 
Choose the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. 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 Power in the blood, there is power in the blood of Jesus. Power in the blood, there is power. In the blood of Jesus, oh, I believe, I receive, there is power in the blood. Oh, I believe, I receive, there is power in the blood. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, Father, in the mighty, everlasting, gracious, holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come before you. Lord, I humbly and sincerely come before you and say, Lord Jesus, oh, have your way. Lord, teach us your way. Lord, open our heart as we go into your holy word, Lord. Your righteous, your holy word, Lord, teach us. Oh, give us a heart of understanding. Give us a listening ear. Lord, open our reception. Open our, our eyes to be attentive to your words in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, Lord. Oh, meet us at the point of the need of what you want us to hear. Lord, make us attentive to your holy word in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, have your way in our lives, Lord. Let the blood of Jesus, the anointing that is uh, attached to this, uh, this word we are about to hear and listen to. Lord, let it begin to speak in our, in our spirit, in our soul, in our mind, Lord, to open our spiritual uh, channel, the channels of our heart, open up by the Holy Spirit, by the voice of the Holy Spirit that will come through this word in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Lord, visit us. Visit your children, Lord. In the mighty and um, everlasting righteous name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, a very hearty welcome. Warm welcome. As we go into this, this, the word of God, my topic today is about the deception of uh, Antichrist. Like my introduction about so minutes ago, so the uh, uh, concerning it's about the deception. The topic of this my this video is the deception of the teaching, the deception of uh, Antichrist. You know, the according to the book of John, it says any any is that any um anyone that says that Jesus did not come in the flesh, you know, is an antichrist. Yeah, I think the gospel of John, the first John, the gospel of the epistle of John, is anyone that this that did not acknowledge that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is what is what antichrist. But even today, I want to go even uh, even uh, deeper concerning the the uh, uh, antichrist, the deception of um, of uh, the antichrist. I want to before we move on, I want us to go to the the Gospel of Matthew chapter twenty four, verses um, four and five. Four and five. I think there are more, but I want to focus today on the. I want to go specific to the to the verses that are. I want to go because this. I'm going to quote a lot of uh, um, Bible verses and, and chapters. Please take your time and read the whole chapter. It's very important to to study the Word of God and to come to read the content of what the this, this the chapter is all about. But the gospel the, the gospel of uh, Matthew chapter twenty four is about the signs of the end time. It's now it's about the exception in the topic of the of the gospel of Matthew chapter twenty four. But today I'm going to go some specific uh, uh, verses. So I want us to go to uh, uh, verse um, verse four. Matthew, the gospel of Matthew 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, I'm very sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. He said, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. 
Anyway, let me go to the adversary of it before we can go to the fall. He said, he, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And then verse 5 again. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I want to go again. Um, uh, to the end of, uh, I think to the last, last verse of it. I'm supposed to add a, a verse. I think I forgot. But this, this chapter is talking about the, the main topic of this chapter is about deception. That is why my topic is the deception of Antichrist. The, the Lord told us to take heed. Take heed of what? Of Antichrist. The deception of Antichrist. It can come, you know, there are many religions of, of, in this world. We have to accept. We have to accept other religions, accept them, but not that they are the true religion, the true faith. No. There are religions, other religions in this world. We have to accept people who, whatever they worship, we have to accept them. But the true faith, the faith, the author, the one who authored true faith, what faith is, is the Lord Jesus Christ, as I'm going to go through the scriptures. But anyone who denies the cross, who denies the Lord Jesus Christ, the, 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 his death and the resurrection the, from the cross, it's an antichrist spirit. And this, uh, this is the, the spirit and the religion we should take heed of. That is the deception of the antichrist. As I, as I go into in details now. Okay. Um, okay. Now, according to the, the same Matthew chapter 24, verse uh, 20, 24. Chapter 24, verse 24. I say, for there, there shall arise false Christ's and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Again, deception, the topic, they shall this, if it is possible, many crises shall arise, false crises, Christ, and false prophets. So it must not be that it must come from the, the uh, from Christianity, but more, they say, there shall arise false Christ, Christ and false prophets. And shall deceive and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. They shall when the elect is not grounded in the word of God, when the elect does not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, when the elect is does not know there is no rooted in the word of God, it does not accept the totality of the gospel, they'll be deceived. So I want to now. Um, um, I want to go to the, the one who author, the author of, of faith, the Lord Jesus Christ, the author of faith, the one who authored faith, not just our faith, but faith. I want to go to, I want us to go to Hebrew, Hebrew chapter, the book of Hebrew chapter 12. The book of Hebrews chapter 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 2. I want to go specific. Please take your time and read the whole chapter. I want to go. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of, of the throne of God. Let me go from verse 1 to 2. And we are foreseeing we are we, are, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily beset us. Sin and its weight. The sin, the sin, the weight. The sin has a weight. And when the sin, when sin enters, the weight of it weighs one down. It brings one down. He said then, which and then uh, to let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So, in running this race, we need patience a lot of patience, 
because the race is not is a, it's not for the swift it's not for the strong but by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ so now the one we are following the one who altered the faith we are to follow his footsteps now he's showing us in the Holy Spirit, giving us example how to run this race. He says here, looking unto Jesus, the author, Jesus, the one who authored the faith, we are to follow his examples. He who the, he said the one, the author and finish up. Today I want to base on the author. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before, uh, before him endured the cross. He was very full of patience. He heard from the father before he could carry out. He did not do anything on his own. He did not try to attempt. He was prayerful in communion with the father. He was, uh, he was um, attentive to the voice of the father, the leadings of the father, of the Holy Spirit of the father before he could venture. That was a commandment that was given to him. He is the author, the one who altered our faith. His examples in footsteps, we should follow. We should follow how he altered this faith. In order, to, in order not to fall into what? Deception, the deception of Antichrist. Okay. Now, how did the Lord Jesus Christ become the author? I want us to go to Revelation chapter, in order to not to fall into the deception of Antichrist. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, to 11, verse 8 and 11. Um, it says, I am, please take your time and read the whole chapter. Like I said, I don't want, otherwise this video is going to be very long. I want to quote a little scriptures. So it says, uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, say the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Jesus Christ is Lord. The Almighty is. This uh, as, uh, um, uh, uh, this as scripture, is it? I don't know if it's the right word. It's the uh, Almighty is ascribed to God. God, the Almighty. Only God has the right to say Almighty is Almighty, all knowing, Almighty. But here it says, I am Alpha. And Omega, the beginning and the ending, say the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So here is the establishment of the Lordship and the Godhead of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus here being established as God. Jesus as here, very simple, clear, that Jesus Christ is God. In order to to in order to not to be deceived, not to fall into deception of the Antichrist. These basics has to be, we have to be grounded and rooted in this, the word of God. Knowing Jesus is God, that nobody, take heed, that nobody deceive you. No man deceive you. There's a lot of deception out there. In order to discredit the Lordship, the Godhead of the Lord Jesus Christ, in order to project a prophet, and one, a, a prophet or somebody, other religion or their, their leadership as being the true, being, as being the, the one God has sent, which is the, the spirit of deception of Antichrist. Take heed. So here, he said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord. Which Lord? The Lord God. The Lord God who created man in his own image, who breathed man, breath of life into man, according to Genesis chapter, chapter 2 verse 7, is the Lord God. The Lord God you have to accept, according to Romans chapter 10, 10 verse, uh, verse 10, you have to accept as your Lord and Savior in order to be born again. You have to believe in your heart and be accept and accept him as your Lord and Savior in order to be regenerated in the newness and to be restored back to the original plan of God. Say Jesus is Lord, the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. He say, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Say the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. Which is, he say, which is now 
presently Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came back as a Holy Spirit, came back in spirit, in the same, in the same Spirit of God, in the same Jesus that came back as the Holy Spirit. In spirit as holy. He left a flesh when he resurrected, even in hell, but he came back as the Holy Spirit. This is the same spirit of Jesus Christ, of Christ. So now we're going. It said that which is and which was, which was the one who altered, who altered the faith, the one who breathed the breath of life into the nostril of man. Who was the one who has the authority, the author of the faith? We are, we are following whose example and footsteps we are to follow. Which was. Okay, and which is to come? Who is to come back again? It's the Lord Jesus Christ, the Almighty. Here, now describing to us the God, the Godhead, who is that Jesus Christ, now establishing that Jesus Christ is Lord, the Almighty. I'll, I'll, let me go to verse 11. I'll say here, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what seest thou? Write in the book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus unto Simeana unto Pagamos unto is sending it to the churches the Lord Jesus Christ is Lord is over the, his church the, the Godhead that is the Lord Jesus Christ so I want us to go now to, to um, the same revelation chapter 4 Chapter 4, verses um, 8 and 11 again. It say here, And the four beasts, and each of them, six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. Who is this Lord God? The Lord God is saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God Almighty, as coming again, Jesus Christ, who is God. Lord God Almighty, whom you have, as, you have to accept to, to be born again as your Lord and Savior. You believe it in your heart, you confess it through your mouth. Is the Lord God, the holy, holy, holy to him. Lord God Almighty, which was, we and is, and is to come. The same ascription, going again to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God but who came in person. Verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, power, and power, for thou hast what? what? Created all things. Who created all things? The Lord Jesus. Who is God? Who came, took the Lord, the Jesus, the uh, Yeshua, Messiah, who took the, the, the flesh, human flesh to in order to save and redeem us. It is the same. Who created, who has it said, for thou has created all things and for thy pleasure they are and we are created. God, he, when he was, when he spoke as the Godhead, he spoke into existence, he spoke the things, spoke according to Genesis chapter 1. But Genesis chapter 2, he took the second, the role of uh, of, uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the Lord God, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, to create. He said, for you, thou hast created for all, thi for thy, for the all things for thy pleasure. Who created? The Lord Jesus, the Lord God, with the same person, the Lord, the, uh, as God Almighty, is being ascribed to. Jesus is God. If you're not grounded in this, in this, this uh, principle, the foundations of the gospel, of the Lord Jesus, of the Bible, of the word of God, you will take, you'll be deceived. The deception of Antichrist, the Lord Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. Jesus is God. Um, let's go further again. I want us to go to Genesis to confirm what I just said. Genesis chapter, chapter 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 7. And then here he said, And the Lord God formed man, out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became what? A living soul. Who created man? The Lord God, the Lord Jesus Christ created man. This is why 
He said here, he formed man. He, as God had, he spoke. As, as, as the Lord God, he, 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 he formed. He came out and created it, brought it into existence. That is how he altered our faith. Okay. I want us to go to, yeah, to go to Colossians, uh, Colossians, uh, Colossians chapter Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. This video is going to be long, and I want it to be long. You know, a teaching I want to do. Okay, here. Colossians chapter... Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 to 20. No, Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 20. Okay. And who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him we are all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Like we read in just some minutes ago in uh, Revelation chapter, chapter 4, verse, uh, verse 11, 8 and verse 11. So, all things were created by him and for him. All things were created by Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, and for him, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God at, at the same time. He said, Anyone who, only God creates, only God can create. He said he created the things for himself. By him, he created them. He created by himself and for himself. So, verse 17, Colossians chapter 1, verse 17. And he is before all things. And by him, all things consist. He is before all things. And by him, all things consist. That is why when, according to the book of John, chapter, chapter 8, when the Lord Jesus Christ was communicating with the, with the Jews, they say, they say, ah, he say, uh, a God is his father. He say, how can you say God is your father? That you're, you're saying, they say they were not in bondage. Abraham is their father. So before, he told them, before Abraham, I was. Abraham saw my days and rejoiced. Before Abraham was, I was. He said, before Abraham came into existence, he was. He was telling the Jews, telling them that he is God. Anyway. Let's continue in Colossians chapter 1, verses 18 now. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in, in, in all things he might have what? The preeminence. That Jesus might have all things preeminence because he altered, he altered, he altered the, the faith. He created all things. All things consisted in him and were created for him. Verse 19. For it pleased the Father. Now the Father is the same, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. Okay. The Father, that in him should all fullness do well. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. <laughs> you know, I'm going to come into that later. Anyway, let's leave that and I'm going to come into it later. Uh, let's go to Ephesians chapter... Um, the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Here it says, For we are his what? We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So we, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ. All humanity all we are created in Christ, not for religion. Jesus is not the author. He did not, or is not the author of true religion. He is the author of faith. He did not come to restore religion. He came to restore uh, humanity. The fall of man. He came to restore man back to the original plan of God, which was created in himself, which was created in him. That is what he came to do. No religion. Jesus came to, re to restore man that fell. Because of sin, man who fell, 
from the from the plan of God, from the purposes of God, from the the agenda of God. From God was created in love and true love, in the likeness and to have the, in the image and to have the likeness of man in the like in the image and likeness of man as they walk in obedience to have the likeness of uh, the likeness of God. That is whom Jesus came to restore. He did not come, came, Jesus did not come to restore religion. He came to restore man. That is why, anyway, um, uh, let's continue about this. Let's continue with it. Okay. Uh, I, want to, I want us to go to, to um, um, Luke, the Gospel of Luke chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. The Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of, of Luke, chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. Um, it said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had set, sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So, before, when Adam and Eve Adam and Eve were created. I want to go back to it. He said Jesus came to preach. He said the Spirit of the Lord is upon him because he has anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent him to heal the brokenhearted. So, uh, uh, let's go back shortly to Genesis chapter 2, verses um, uh, 7. He said, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostril, nostril, nostrils, and the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So let's go back again, verse, um, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress and to keep. When the Lord, the Lord God created man, formed man, the Lord Jesus, he breathed, he breathed into his nostril, man became a living soul. So, he provided for man. Man did not ask for it. He made the provision. He took the man and placed him into the garden of in the eastern in the garden which he has he, he planted. He planted the garden for man according to the same Genesis chapter two verse fifteen. He placed man into that garden. Man did not ask for it. a provision. The love of God providing for man. He provided for man his for his welfare for him because love. Okay, because he loved man. Get, let, go, let's go back to uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. When man was created, man was not poor. This poverty here is not poverty of uh, not having any material possession of food. No, it's the, the poverty of the spirit. When man fell, man became poor. Man, the spirit of man, the soul of man became poor, but became self-centered, which is the poverty, which is poverty. He came out of that which was man, God created for man. And the spirit of man, the soul and the spirit of man became poor. He has to be restored back to the original plan of God, into the image and the likeness he has fallen from. So he said, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, upon him to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent him to heal the brokenhearted. When man was created, man was no uh, um, uh, brokenhearted. No, man was created with the image and the likeness of God, full of, uh, connected to the glory of God, in communion, in love, in living in the provision of God, and, and all in in, not in perfection, walking towards perfection, to the likeness, in the likeness of God. Okay. The Lord Jesus Christ came to preach deliverance. Man did not need deliverance in the Garden of Eden. Deliverance, no, man was, man was, it was formed and the breath of God was pure in man. If there was no pollution, man did not need deliverance. So, and then he sought to preach deliverance to the cap captives. Man was not captured. For what? He was not in, living in captivity. He was under the glory of God. And then he said again, to preach deliverance to the captives and, to, and the recovering of sight to the blind. Man was not blind to the voice. 
and the and the purposes of God and the plan of God because after creating man in Genesis chapter chapter 2 verse 7 and 15 they say he planted man in the garden he put, brought man and put man in the garden which he has planted to keep and to dress man knew the purposes the purposes purpose of God for him he said to keep and to dress and God gave him a commandment what not to do and what to do he was not blind to the voice of God. Man was not blind to the voice of God. Man was not blind to the, to the, to the purpose, purpose, purposes of God for him. No. Now, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Man was not bruised. Man was, you know, carrying the, the, the purity of the, of the spirit that was beaten into man. So, the Lord Jesus Christ came to bring this one, and then here, 19, and to, be, um, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So, through the same spirit that was breathed into the nostril of man, now the spirit of God was now in the Lord Jesus Christ. As he, preach, he preaches, he said to preach. This is that he speak, he speak, as he speaks under the inspiration and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, man will be set free from all this captivity that befell man when man fell from the garden in the garden of Eden. That's the restoration. Here, we do not hear that Jesus came to restore. There was no, no religion mentioned here. No. He came to restore man to the original purpose of God. He came to restore, to display, the, to display. He came through to display the examples of faith. What faith is all about. Which he authored, which he himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, authored in the Garden of Eden. He said he came to display that example through his lifestyle. And which we have to follow, looking unto him, as we follow with endurance and, and patience, we will, we will, the race will be, will not, because the race is not for the swift, it's not for the strong, it's through the power of the Holy Spirit of God. So, now, let's continue. So, the Lord Jesus Christ did not come to restore religion. So, religion is man-made. That is the deception of the Antichrist. Jesus came. Now, as we are now going to go again to see, he came here. The purpose of why he came. He came to restore. Through what means? I want us to go to first John, uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 26. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 26. Um, uh, 29, sorry. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 29. I'm sorry for that. I made a mistake. Chapter 1, verse 29. It says here, And then the next day, that is the testimony of John, John the Baptist. I say the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Not the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of religion. No. Or the Lamb of God, which taketh uh, uh, religion. No. The sin of the world. If you're born in the northern, uh, uh, northern, uh, is it Atmos, uh, 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 the south West, north, is it uh, a south? I'm speaking German now. In the east, west, north, and south of the globe, of the globe, Jesus came. Is the Lamb that came to take away the sins, the sin of the world, yours included. No religion. Religion can never take away your sin. Is the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, which He came to take away, take away the sin of the world, the the world. Not religion, not uh, you know, uh, uh, ethnicity. Is he came to take away the sin of the world, the stink of sin that had, that befell humanity and the creation. That is whom the Lamb of God. So behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Okay. Hebrew ten. I want us to go to Hebrew chapter ten. Verse um, Hebrew chapter 10, verse 5. Um, it says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, 
He said, sacrifice and offering, that would this not, would this not, but a body has thou prepared me. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ was prepared as a body to be what? To be sacrificed. The lamb of God that take it away this, the sin of the world. Jesus prepared as a, as a sacrifice. Accepted, I said that was acceptable unto the Lord. He said, verse 6, Hebrew chapter, chapter 4, uh, chapter, okay, chapter, cha Hebrew chapter, chapter 10, verse 4 to 6. He said, for it is possible, it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith sacrifice and offerings, thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me in burnt offerings and sacrifices. For sin, thou hast no pleasure. Then say I, lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written for me, of me, to do thy will. So Jesus Christ was pre prepared as a what? A sacrifice. A body that has God prepared as a sacrifice. He prepared himself as a sacrifice. Okay. Uh, I want us to go to Romans chapter chapter um, 3 Rome, the book of Romans chapter 3 verse uh, 21 to 25 he said but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all not to the religion the righteousness which is of faith by Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. Verse 23. For all have sinned. For every man have sinned. All men, women, and no matter your race, your color, wherever you come from, all have sinned. For all have sinned. That's 20, 22. Romans chapter 3, verse 22. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When Adam fell into sin as a result of disobedience, he ate the fruit. The, the blood of every man became contaminated with sin. So no matter the prophet, no matter the, the whoever, all the prophets in the Bible, they were holy, but they were not without sin. They were not with us. They were not to the holiness of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one, the conception was not of man. That was why his conception was not of man, but of God himself. In order for the blood to remain pure and to the blood to redeem the man, to redeem every race, every, every tongue, every, uh, every tribe, every language, and every nation. Because it's the blood of God himself. Okay. He said, because man, I said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He did not say glory, uh, did not say religion, man. Wherever you are from, man, all have sinned. And being justified freely by his grace to the re redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Redemption came to the in Christ Jesus because of he came a prepared body to be uh, as, a, as a sacrifice to be offered. As a sacrifice, a lamb, the lamb of God, behold, the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. That is why redemption is only through the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Whom God has set forth to be of a name, he said, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a pre or pro. Petition through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins. For the not sin, remission of sins. The sin, Adam's sin, and your own personal sin. And the sins of your, your bloodline. That are passed, that are passed through the forbearance of what? Of God. Let's continue. Uh, Revelation chapter. Revelation uh, chapter 5, Revelation chapter 5, verse, um, Revelation chapter 5, I need to check, that I want this video to be, you know, 
uh, to be a full teaching. Revelation chapter 5, that this topic has to be grounded. Revelation chapter 5, uh, verse 9. It says, I want to, before I get to uh, verse 9, I want to go to, um, from verse 1, uh, verse 1 to 3. He said, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within on, on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither on the, under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. For, and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open, to read, and to read the book, neither to look therein. So, no prophet, whether past, present, and coming, no, no was able to open that book, to look, to take, and look in. They were not able because of sin. So, go to, let's go to, uh, no religion. Here is not about religion. Then let's go, uh, um, then verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of Jesse, have prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, the, I'm still in uh, Revelation chapter 5, number 6, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood the lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into the earth. All the earth, the Lamb of God. Behold, the Lamb of God. The uh, John, Prophet John the Baptist saw. Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Uh, the one he saw that Lamb that was slain. He saw a vision of that. He saw the Lord Jesus Christ coming. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The Lord God opened his, his eyes. He saw the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. That is the Lamb of God that will take away the sins of the world. Not religion, but the sins of the world, of every nation. Of every race, every tongue, every, every, everyone. So now, I said then, he said then, uh, for seven, and he came and took the book out of the hand, right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Now, and verse 8, and when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty air that fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of others, which are the prayers of saints. Nine and there sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. It did not mention religion. Jesus did not come to redeem religion, religion to save religion. No. <coughs> Sorry. He came to re redeem man, humanity, and the creation that fell on into the bondage of sin. Your soul is very important to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God. So, now, um, let's go to the, um, yeah, now let's go to uh, John chapter, John chapter 3, the Gospel of John. Gospel of John chapter 3, Verses, um, the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses, um, so this is why when uh, Nicodemus, according to the Gospel of John, chapter 3, uh, they say he came to Jesus, was a teacher of the, of the law. He came, and anyway, let me just go shortly into it, my time is running. Uh, 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 gospel, the Gospel of John chapter 3 verse um, 1. There was a man of, a, of the Pharisee named Decodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher. Come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man, not except religion, except a man. He said, a man, there was a man of the Pharisee who came to Jesus. And now Jesus telling him, Now very liberally I say unto you, Except a man be born, be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
Not except a man be born of religion. No, except a man be born of born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Religion will not save you. It's the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. What he did, his blood washes and saves, forgives sins. So, and then Nicodemus, verse 4, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born, born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered. That is the question of a religion. Him being a religious man. And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Except a man accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The spirit, that corruption that came in into man in the Garden of Eden, that is in every man that is of the blood, the race of Adam. No matter where you, what color, where you come from, where you live, religion is deceptive. Except a, except a man accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it cannot be regenerated. It cannot be restored into into that original plan of God and purposes of God according to Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. You have to be born again to receive the Spirit of Christ in you, the Holy Spirit of God, in when you accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then the Word of God, the Bible, as you read it, begin to cleanse you. That's what is told Nicodemus, who was a religious Jew. He said, you, a man, you need to be born again. You need to be restored. Religion will not save you. You need to come back to the to accept the spirit of God that was uh, the bread that came into you that God corrupted. You need to be renewed from it. Uh, renewed by it. So now I need to hurry. Uh, now, now that is why, according to uh, 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 um, um, Apostle, the uh, that is why the a question came to came in the book of. Um, in the book of um, no, let's finish there. That's uh, John chapter three verse sixteen. He say yeah, that is why this question, um, verse sixteen. For God so loved loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He did not say whosoever religion. No, he said who for God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever Believe it in him. No matter your race, no matter your color, no matter your tribe, no matter whatever. It did not mention religion. It's whosoever. Believe it in him. Him, the Lord Jesus Christ, then shall be saved. The one you, we need to believe in him because he created you. He formed you. He breathed that breath of life in you. He is God. He wants to bring you back to his original plan for your life according to Genesis chapter 26. Chapter verse 1, verse 26, and uh, 26 to 28, in order to re be reblemished, in order to be restored in that original plan of God for your life, for God's purpose, for why He brought you into this earth. You need to, Jesus, you need to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So we go again. Jesus didn't have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. According to here, Romans chapter, chapter 10, verse, um, Romans chapter 10, verse, um, verse 10. He said, for with the heart, no, chapter 10, verse 9. He said, that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in the heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you reject this, this verse here, that Jesus, Jesus, if you refuse to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that God raised him. If you refuse to re accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in your heart, I believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you cannot be saved. Religion, that's your plain religion. That's the deception of the, the Lord Jesus Christ told us in the and uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 4, it said, Take heed that no man deceive you. Anyone that rejects here this, this statement in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that's Antichrist. Your soul, that is Antichrist, the spirit of Satan, Antichrist, that wants you in hellfire. 
and it is not the plan of God. It is not the purposes of God. No. God wants to. Jesus, who formed you, who created you, who breathed the breath of life in the Genesis, who spoke into spiritual, in the spirit as God, he came and took the second, second person and formed you and breathed the breath of life in you and placed you into the Garden of Eden, provided for you and gave you commandment. That is why he is the author of faith. And he's calling you back into that. He came back again when Adam fell. Corruption came into every human. He came to restore us back. So when you refuse to accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're in danger. You're, in, you're on the way to hellfire. And that is the spirit of Antichrist. Any, any man that rejects the Romans chapter 10 verse 9, that Jesus Christ, that refused to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and as Lord, and believe in his heart that God has raised him from the dead, that person can never be saved. No matter religion, that religion, it will deceive that person into hellfire. And I pray it is not your Lord. As you listen to this message, that the Lord Jesus Christ will show you mercy. And that's the purpose of this message in Jesus' name. Amen. So now, this is why the angels ask a question. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, ask the question in, um, in Psalm 8. They were asking. Psalm chapter 8. Psalm chapter 8, verse 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? That is why they say, angels, they were wondering, what is man that God is so mindful of man? Not of religion. Of say God, angels were asking, "What is man that God that you are so mindful of him?" Not of religion, because you are fearfully and wonderfully made in His image. To so into His likeness, as you walk in obedience, you will be coming to His likeness. He loves and cares for you. He doesn't want you perished. Religion will deceive and destroy your life and bring you. At the end of the day, you end up in hellfire. Okay, now let's go to um, uh, John um, Apostle and the Apostle, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, Art of Apostle, chapter 4, verse 12. My time is going now. My, my clock is almost an hour. Gospel of um, Apostle, the Art of Apostles, chapter 4, verse 12. Chapter 4, verse 12. It says here. Now, there is no, neither is, is there salvation in, non, in any other. For there is none other name given under heaven, uh, under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. Only the name of Jesus. Because he created you, he formed you, he is your God. He is only through him you can come back to the, the God who created you in Genesis, in Garden of Eden. He created you. Only he is only one. Because he created you, he has the, he is the author of the faith. He has authority too. That is why he came as a man to redeem you back to himself, to reconcile you back to himself. That is why he's so mindful of you. He loves you so dearly. That is why he's full of love. And that is why too, in John, in the Gospel of John chapter, chapter 6 verse 14, chapter 6 verse 14, chapter 6 verse 14, he say here, in the Gospel of uh, uh, John chapter, I think chapter 14, verse 6. 14, verse 6. Chapter 14, verse 6. Chapter 14, verse 6. He say here, uh, Jesus said, I am the same. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. <laughs> that is why Jesus the only way. He is the way. The truth and the life. No man can come to the Father except Him because He created you. He is God. He made you. He formed you. He breathed the breath of life in you. He is your God. He is your Savior. He is your, your Father. He is all in you. You were created in Him for Him, for His pleasure, for Him, and by Him and for Him to reconcile you back to Himself. He wants to restore you. Religion will destroy you. And the Lord Jesus Christ is calling you. Take heed that no man deceive you. If you're deceived, 
As you listen to this video, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God begin to touch, begin to speak, begin to touch, begin to, you know, move as you pray, God, show me the truth. That the truth of God that is in this video, the word of God that I have spoken, begin to, begin to convict you. Your soul, you are precious before God. You are loved. God who created you, Jesus Christ came to bring you back into that love. The love, he, 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 he fashioned you in to bring you, to restore you back to that. Not of religion. He did not come for religion. He came for the, 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 the is that the, the, the fall, the, the corruption that destroyed both man and creation. He loves you. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, as your people, those who are purposed to see this video, to come in contact with this video, Lord Jesus, encounter them. Reveal yourself to them. Let your will be done in their lives, in their homes, in their marriages, in their families, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let your mercy speak. Those who are deceived, Lord, I pray, as they take time, your time to read the passages of this, um, of this, uh, of this video, the, the passages of the scripture that were quoted, Lord, they will come to their senses. And those who are deceived already through religion, Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God the mercy that is in the blood of Jesus, the, 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 the voice that is in the, the, the voice of the blood of Jesus that speaks better things than voice, other voices, the blood, voices of blood and of God, contrary voices, begin to speak salvation. The blood of Jesus Christ that touched the earth when he was crucified on, on the cross, that touched the earth, that the, that the earth broke, the, the, the grave opened, the, the, the dead rose, that that blood would begin to speak that is speaking salvation also into the earth to redeem the creation. Everything that fell will begin to speak into the earth, into the atmosphere, into the hearts of men and women, into families, into as they breathe in the air, they watch the video, as they walk on the, on the face on the face of the earth, on the earth, that the glory, the blood of Jesus Christ that touched the earth and the earth reacted because of the holiness in that blood, the purity of that blood that was not of this, from this earth, but a blood, a heavenly blood the blood of the creator touched the earth reacted like the earth reacted in Genesis chapter 1 when a command was given let there be light light came and the earth Lord said let the water separate separation they obeyed immediate obedience and I pray that blood blood of God that touched the heaven the, in order to restore that which were destroyed in order to restore that which the, the sin corrupted as everyone that hears and listens to this this message Lord, as they march on the face of the earth, Lord, let salvation, the voice of the blood of Jesus, begin to lead them into salvation. Let the voice that's the blood of Jesus begin to convict them, begin to speak from the earth, begin to speak in the air, because the blood dropped, the Lord was hung on the cross, the blood of Jesus that was dropping the air, the, air, the atmosphere, the, 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 the atmosphere was saturated with that blood. The earth had the voice of the blood. They received the blood. The atmosphere was saturated. The earth was saturated with the blood. Heaven, there's the blood of Jesus it's at the altar, the altar, the heavenly altar, the altar of grace where he's interceding in heaven. There is the, the blood of Jesus in heaven. It told the air, it told the earth. It's speaking salvation. As anyone who comes in contact with the video, I pray, let the voice that the blood of Jesus begin to speak, speak, speak conviction that you need salvation, that you need the Lord Jesus Christ, that he loves you, that you come back to the, to the altar and the finisher of our faith. Of the true faith the one who created the lord jesus christ he loves you dearly because we are you are wonderfully and fearfully made he wants to restore he wants you to come back to the original purpose which he, which he created you for as you hear to this message the lord encounter you touch you visit you with divine visitation in jesus name i pray amen amen in case, um, just as you listen to the video, you want to be born again. Just ask the Lord to have mercy. Begin to cry out to him to have mercy upon you. Confess your sins. Cry to the Lord to have mercy. Whichever way you have sinned, say the blood of Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I have sinned against you. I confess my sins. This sins has to be from the heart. 
be sincere. Ask him to forgive the Lord Jesus, to forgive you. Accept him as your Lord and Savior, that the Lord Jesus Christ, that if God raised him from the dead, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9, and ask him, the blood of Je the Lord Jesus Christ, to cleanse you. Accept the Lordship, his Lordship over you, and, and, and let him be your Lord and Savior. You will see there will be cleansing. And the, as you do so, you need um, information. Just, I have my number on this channel. I have... Um, I have also, you can write to us. I have my email address here. The contact us will be so, so, so willing to, uh, to, to help you because you need to be granted. You need discipleship as you listen. The Lord bless you and keep you standing by his mighty power. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please help me to share this video, share this teaching, you know, let people, as many as possible, come in contact with this video. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.